This is 161 session of this morning devotion. And we are taking him 158. Called unto holiness. Called unto holiness. Church of our God. Purchase of Jesus. Redeemed by his blood. Called from the world and his idols to flee. Called from the bond. They just seem to be free. Holiness unto the Lord is a wash word and song. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching along. Sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Called unto holiness. Children of light, walking with Jesus in garments of white, remnant on solid, not tarnished with sin. God's Holy Spirit abiding within. Holiness unto the Lord is a wash word and sang. Holiness unto the Lord as we're marching along, sing it. Shout it loud and long, holiness unto the Lord, now and forever. Called unto holiness, praise is their name. This blessed secret to faith, now made plain. Not our unrighteousness, but Christ within. Living and reigning and saving from sin. Holiness unto the Lord is a wash word and sang. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching along. Sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. Called unto holiness. Glorious thought of from the wilderness wandering brought out from the shadows and darkness of night into the canon of perfect delight. Holiness unto the Lord is a wash word and sang. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching along, sing it. Shout it loud and long, holiness unto the Lord, now and forever. Called unto holiness, bride of the Lamb, waiting the bridegroom returning again. Lift up your hands, for the dead draw it near, when in his beauty. The king shall appear. Holiness unto the Lord is a wash word and sang. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching along. Sing it, shout it loud and long. Holiness unto the Lord now and forever. He says that the songwriter in stanza 5 says, Called unto holiness, bride of this of he, the Lamb, waiting the bridegroom's returning again. Lift up your heads, for the day draweth near, when there is beauty, the king shall appear. The king will soon appear. I want us to thank the Lord this morning for a new day and ask him for grace that today we will live with the consciousness that the king can appear today. Anybody can be called home. The king can appear any day, any time. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you this morning because you are the Almighty, the one that is seated on the throne whose ways are past finding out. The Lord is your name. You are great. You are mighty. You are marvelous. We thank you because we are expecting the, 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 the coming of the king. Great Father, when he comes in glory, oh, may I not be found wanting. When he comes in glory, oh, may the, the people, oh, the people, Great Father, that are 
been hearing the voice of our Father in the Lord, that have been God Almighty in this platform, listening to us, and who have listened to our Bible studies in time past, and listened to the charismatic hour in time past, and Sunday light in time past, may none of the people be lost. Great Father, when the trumpet will sound, may nobody miss the, the, the trumpet. May nobody, Great Father in heaven, be buried as a sinner. Blessed Father, this morning we come before you, asking the Lord of glory that you speak to us again, direct us and guide us and correct us and instruct us. Pour your spirit of holiness upon our lives, O God. Make us to understand that our call is a call unto holiness, called unto holiness, church of God. My Father, I pray you that uh, our watchword, our song, our desire, our target, our waking thought, our pursuit, and everything, Great Father in heaven, our priority in life is how to please God and how to be holy in the body and how to be holy in the mind and how to be holy in the spirit. Thank you, Blessed Redeemer, for answer to prayer. This morning, speak to us again and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We are still reading from Psalm 45 as we read yesterday. We are reading 6 and 7, verse 6 and 7. Now the throne, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, dear God, that anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. This morning we are discussing the word of God, the scepter of God's kingdom. The scepter of God's kingdom. Uh, it's a right a scepter. Now let's read verse 6 again. Thy throne of God is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. We are going to look at the meaning of the word scepter, which simply means authority, the power, authority of God's kingdom. In Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 1, 8 and 9, But unto the Son is said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now righteousness is uh, now presented as uh, the rod, the authority, the symbol, the, the symbol of the authority of God's kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity, therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Take note. A church that uh, is not promoting righteousness, a church that the teachings on righteousness is secondary, is a church that has no scepter, a church that has lost authority. The authority of believers, the authority of the church of Jesus is uh, tied to her attitude to right living. And so the word scepter it simply means a staff, a button borne by a sovereigns uh, uh, or as an emblem or a symbol of authority, symbol of being royal, symbol of imperial authority. That is the simple definition of a scepter. It is a staff or a, but, a button uh, that uh, uh, of uh, by sovereigns which they put on and they use it as an emblem, they use it as a symbol of the authority, of their royalty, of their imperial uh, uh, authority and majesty. Now, the word uh, scepter in Hebrews is uh, shebet, and in Greek is, uh, is uh, skep skeptron, skeptron, and it simply means the symbol of authority, the symbol of power, the symbol of sovereignty, an emblem of royalty and imperial majesty. This originated from the idea that rulers are shepherds and as shepherds they, they should have authority, they should have something in their hands. Like you see shepherds, they go with a shepherd's stick. That is authority they have. They use it to direct, they use it to correct, they use it to, to 
to punish now the erring flock like uh, in Genesis 49 can we read verse 10 Genesis 49 let's read verse 10 the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be can you see that authority the scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come and unto him shall the gathering of the people be now in Psalm 23 Psalm 23 you see David uh, talking about his rod and his staff the rod and the staff they can also be seen as a scepter now in verse uh, verse uh, verse uh, 4 yea though I walk through the uh, valley of shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me now the rod of the shepherd the staff of the shepherd is a, 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 a symbol that is a shepherd and we said that the word uh, scepter which is shepherd in hebrews and then and the sceptron in greek uh, is a symbol of authority and then it is originated the idea of this originated that shepherds people who are keeping flocks who are keeping animals that they are like rulers of the people and so in in numbers 24 verse 17 numbers 24 and verse 17 verse 17 i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not nigh there shall come a star out of jacob and a scepter shall rise out of israel a ruler the one with authority and shall smite the corners of the moab and destroy all the children of a shed a scepter shall rise authority a person of authority a person that will execute the will the mind of god isaiah chapter 14 and verse 15 Isaiah chapter 14 verse 15 yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the size of uh, the north Isaiah 14 verse 15 then verse 16 then they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to break uh, tremble uh, that did shake kingdoms shaking kingdoms shaking kingdoms and then so then it follows that uh, uh, that uh, this shepherd uh, uh, shepherd uh, uh, staff which is uh, uh, now uh, translated to a scepter a, a kind of authority which represents authority if you read uh, Leviticus 27 32 and uh, Micah chapter 7 verse 14 you will see that uh, that looks like uh, is uh, it was uh, uh, presented in form of uh, what they call shepherd crooks Leviticus 27 and verse 32 shepherd's crook that is uh, the 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 staff is holding he has a uh, something hook uh, something that is uh, curved at the end with which he can use to pull the ear of the animal. In Leviticus 27 and verse 32, and concerning tight of the head or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth on the on the rod, passeth on the rod, the tent shall be hold, uh, holy unto the Lord. Can you see passing on the rod? Passing on the rod. There is a rod they all pass through, pass through the flocks, pass through the, the rod, the rod, the rod. Use, the rod is used to direct, to correct, to put, make the senseless animal to have sense. When the rod comes upon the senseless animal, direction is given. Micah chapter 7 and verse 14, chapter 7 verse 14 of Micah 
and feed thy people with your rod, the rod, feed them with the rod, the flock of thy heritage, we dwell solitary in the wood, in the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Basham and Gilead as in the days of old. Feed your people with what? Thy rod. The rod. He uses the rod to direct them, to guide them. So the rod is the, the rod the rod or the staff it was applied to the shepherd cook like the wand or the authority of the rulers. So one of the insignia, insignia, insignia of, uh, of, uh, of supreme power. That is it. So the, uh, the scepter is like the wand or authority of rulers. And then one of the insignia of uh, supreme power. Esther chapter 4 and verse uh, 11. Esther chapter 4 verse 11. It's like the signature. It's like uh, the seal. The seal of uh, the king. Esther chapter 4 and verse 11. All the king's servant and the people of the king's province do know whosoever whether man or woman shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called there is one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that is uh, he puts it out and the person touches it that he may live but I have not been called to come in unto the king this 30 days so you find out that the scepter when the king the, the favors you he pushes it before you of old and when the person touches it sometimes when you go to the rulers and you bow you see them they will use that they are rather put on your head they put it at your back that is a symbol of authority symbol of you being accepted symbol of you being recognized as a being under that authority now the church of God on earth is God's kingdom. Is God's kingdom on earth. Now in Revelation 1, 5 and 6, our sins are forgiven through the blood of Jesus and we are made kings and we are made priests unto our God. That is also repeated in chapter 5, 9 and 10 of Revelation. And in Luke chapter 17, 20 and 21, Jesus said, Don't rejoice because... The devils are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in the book of heaven. And then he turned and said, I give unto you power and authority to tread over serpents and scorpions. So the church of God on earth has authority. It has power. It's a kingdom that has power. It's a kingdom that has a scepter. A kingdom that has authority which they can exercise. In ch chapter 12 of Hebrews, and verse uh, 28, Hebrews 12, and verse 28. Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom. So, the church is a kingdom of God on earth. Luke 11, and verse 20. Chapter 11 of Luke. Let us read verse 20. But if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. The kingdom of God coming upon the church. So a kingdom must have a king. So if the church is uh, God's kingdom on earth, then there are kings. It's because every kingdom must have a king who rules by law over a number of subjects within the territory. John chapter 18 and verse 37. John chapter 18 and let us read verse 37. The church is a kingdom and then and since it's a kingdom, he has a king. Verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, on, and for the, this cause came I into the world, that I should be a witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So the king of the church is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the king of the church. 
in chapter 10 of Luke and verse 9, heal the sick that are therein. Say unto them, the kingdom of God is come near unto you. Heal the sick, exercise the authority, and tell them that the kingdom has come unto you. The church of God is the kingdom of God on earth, which is supposed to exercise the authority of God. But this authority is connected to righteousness. Of course, you know that the ark of God lost its power because of the handlers. The ark of God that divided the Jordan. The ark of God that, that uh, led Israel to the promised land and uh, led them into a place of rest. Became powerless because the people surrounding it were on sinful men, were on holy men, were men of iniquity. So the believer is born into the kingdom of God's dear son. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5. When you are born again as a believer, you are born into a kingdom. You are delivered from a kingdom and born, brought into another kingdom. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 5. Chapter 5 and verse 5 of Ephesians. For this you know that, uh, that no homemonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater had any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. There is the kingdom of Christ and of God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Colossians 1 verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, what is this kingdom of God's son? The church. The church is the kingdom of God's son. The church is the kingdom of Jesus and not the kingdom of any man. Today, men have turned the church to become their own kingdom. Yes, but the church is the kingdom of Jesus and not the kingdom of any man. Colossians chapter 4, 11. And Jesus, which is called Justus, who are of the circumcision, these only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God, which have been a comfort unto me. Fellow workers unto the kingdom of God. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. Second Timothy 4, 18. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will present me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. There is the heavenly kingdom, and there is also the earthly kingdom. The heavenly kingdom is where Jesus Christ is now. The earthly kingdom of God is the church, and that is where his power resides. The earlier the church realizes that the power of God is in the kingdom of God on earth, and that we are to exercise this power. But then, if this power must be exercised, then righteousness, because it is a scepter of righteousness. Those who must exercise it are people that are righteous, who are living righteous. Otherwise, exercise of authority without righteousness is bringing wrath upon the person's head. Now, First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 12, that you would walk worthy of God who had called you, unto his kingdom and glory our call is a call to god's kingdom and unto glory and so there is then the kingdom of uh, the of, of god on earth the church is the kingdom of god on earth there is also the heavenly kingdom and there is also the eternal kingdom second peter chapter 1 verse 11 heavenly kingdom and the eternal kingdom second peter chapter 1 verse 11 for so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is talking about everlasting kingdom, eternal kingdom. But then outside this, there is outside this, there is uh, the heavenly kingdom. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Can we please read? Verse 20 of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. This is talking about the kingdom of God, the church. The kingdom is not in word, but in power. In demonstration of the power of God. The kingdom of God is not food and drinking, but 
righteousness. That is how the kingdom of God. Can we read Romans chapter 14 and verse 17? For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, operators of the kingdom of God's power and authority are men who embrace right living, who are diligent and who are careful in maintaining a clean walk with God. So, the throne of God is established and operated under righteousness. Nobody that is a living unrighteous life can operate the power of God, the authority of God. You know the story of the sons of Sceva that were living in sin. They were living in sin and they came up, they, want to, they wanted to operate what is solely for the righteous and then and they were attacked. So everybody must be very careful. Psalm 92, and let us read from verse, uh, verse uh, 12. The righteous shall flourish like palm tree. It shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Uh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. That is it. The righteous flourishing in the course of our God. Proverbs chapter 16, 12 and 13. 16 chapter of Proverbs. Can we read 12 and 13? It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness. Can you hear that? So, if anybody say, I'm righteous, I belong to the church, now we have heard that we have authority. And then and you are practicing abomination and wickedness. You are putting yourself in danger. For the throne is established by righteousness. Established by righteousness, operated by righteousness. Verse 13, righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. Righteous king lips are the ones that the uh, acceptor of the, their kingdom is right acceptor. They are the ones that operate this power of the kingdom. The power of the kingdom is not everybody in the kingdom. Careless people in the kingdom, they are done careless talkers, careless eaters, and careless speakers. People who do things carelessly, they don't operate the power of the kingdom. 25th of uh, Proverbs and verse 5. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Wickedness, when it is taken away from the king, then throne is established, but that is established in righteousness. Now, when you look at, think of Joseph and think of Daniel, these were men that were made great by the scepter of righteousness, by the authority, by the rod of righteousness. They were made great. Their righteousness spoke for them. Even Jacob said, let my righteousness speak for me in time to come. So, what about Daniel? Daniel rose on the wings of uh, the son of righteousness. Rose for Daniel in, in uh, rose for Daniel and on the wings of it, Daniel excelled. Daniel chapter 6, 1 to 5. And then at Malachi 3, 1 and 2, you will see son of righteousness rising. And in Genesis chapter 37, verse 3, and chapter 41, 28 to 47, you will see the rise of Joseph, but it was a rise on the scepter authority of righteousness. And that of Daniel, it was righteousness. On the wings of righteousness, on the scepter of righteousness, he arose. So righteousness exhausts a man. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 34. Righteousness exhausts, but sin, sin brings people down. Proverbs 11, 18 and 19. Proverbs chapter 11, can we read 18 and 19? The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward, a guaranteed reward. As righteousness tended to life, so he that pursueth evil Pursuate it to his own death. This is the word of God. Those who pursue righteousness, please continue. Because it will lead you to life. It will lead you to greatness. It will lead you to good things. Verse 30. The fruit of righteousness is a tree of life. And he that winneth soul is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Much more the wicked and the sinner. So let's, uh, those of us that are pursuing 
righteousness continue. Verse 28, he that trusted in his riches shall fail, but the righteous shall flourish as branch. Now you cannot, we cannot exhaust what the scepter of righteousness does in a life, a life of a person who embraces righteousness. Isaiah 32, 16 and 17, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field, and the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness shall be quietness and assurance forever. That is what righteousness does. That is what a scepter of righteousness exposes a man to, and exposes a child to, and exposes a family to, and exposes a boy to, a boy who embraces righteousness. He's on his way to greatness. He's on his way to greatness. But if you see a person, a boy, a, a, a woman, a girl, that embraces uh, unrighteousness, that person is uh, setting himself up to for a fall. James 3.18 And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Now, righteousness has fruit, and it is sown. So, an iniquity also has fruit, and it is so equally sown. So, you choose between right living and the right talking right dressing right speaking to to speaking the way you like using your mouth as if you are the lord of your life first timothy chapter 6 number 6 but godliness righteousness with contentment is great gain it carries gain that is the word of god so righteousness is a platform for establishing purposes of god for your life Yes, if the, the plan of God, the purpose of God is established on people's life, on the platform of right living. Now, if you miss it uh, on uh, at the platform of right living, you have missed it all. Look at Isaiah 54 verse 14. In righteousness shall thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Young man, young woman, Whoever that wants to be established in business, established in the faith, established in this life, established in this marriage, or established in any area of life, must think of uh, this embracing the scepter of righteousness. Now, chapter 59 of Isaiah 16 and 17. Isaiah 59, 16 and 17. And he saw that there was no man. I wonder that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness, it sustained him. His righteousness is sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. And an helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing. And was clad with zeal as a cloak. Now there is the breastplate of righteousness which we need to cover our chest from being brought down if you go to to ephesians chapter 6 and you begin to read as in the list of uh, the list of uh, weapons of the war and uh, both offensive and defensive you see righteousness as the breastplate which you use to cover now uh, isaiah 32 verse 1 behold the king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment take note a prince shall a king shall reign in righteousness as believers and as people who belong to the kingdom of god if we want to have dominion if we want to rule our environment if we want to bring devil under our feet if we want to command authority in our environment if we want to hear the devil submitting to us we want to deliver the oppressed then here it is we must embrace righteousness Proverbs chapter 8, verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. You can see righteousness promotes. Chapter 21 and verse 21 of Proverbs 21, 21. Now he that followeth after righteousness and followeth after mercy, what does he find? He finds life. He finds righteousness. He finds honor. So, follow. Make up your mind that you are going to follow righteousness because it is in following righteousness you can find mercy. It is uh, in following righteousness that you have authority. The king shall be established 
in righteousness. And righteousness should be established. So righteousness is very, very essential. So righteousness is inevitable. So righteousness is still God's demand till today for those who want to rule with him, for those who want to exercise authority of the king, for those who want the escapta of the kingdom to not to depart from them. Now, Skepta of the departed from Shiloh when Shiloh went into sin. So when a church embraces evil, when a people, when a believer, when a pastor, when a man of God, when whosoever is embracing the evil way, authority of God departs from the person. The person becomes just empty drum that makes a lot of noise. So this morning we want to come before the Lord and then I tell him, look at Joseph. He was a uh, he, he rode on the wings of righteousness. Righteousness does not disappoint. Look at Daniel. Daniel rose on the wings of righteousness. And righteousness does not disappoint. Look at uh, Jacob. At the point Jacob decided to embrace righteousness. He was not disappointed. All the time he was going crooked where he continued having failure and failure until he drew the line. Let us pray. Father, this morning we thank you because of the word we have had this morning. Oh God, this is truth of the kingdom. Now this word is very, very, uh, very, very timely. My Father and my God, we have seen that uh, a scepter is a staff of authority. My Father, it is, uh, it is an emblem. It is a symbol of royalty, it's a, in, in a symbol of imperial majesty. It is a symbol of uh, having authority. My Father and my God. And you say, a scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver between his feet until Shiloh come. For unto him shall the gathering of the people be. My Father and my God. I want to pray this morning, blessed Redeemer, that every one of us in the church should come to realization that the church is a kingdom. And those who are in the church, who rule in this church, are expected to be men and women that have embraced righteousness. And if the devils, if the kingdom of God must rule on earth, then every member of the kingdom must embrace righteousness. Therefore, blessed Father, I pray that you forgive us all our carelessness, careless uh, abandonment, careless language, careless look, careless thought, careless dressing, careless activities. Father, I ask that you forgive us, you cleanse us, from all this wickedness in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, we are asking you, O oh God, that uh, you multiply the grace upon our life as we journey on this journey to heaven and as we occupy in the, the seat of ministry. In the name of Jesus, my Father and my God, I pray, great Father in heaven, that every one of us will embrace this scepter, this authority, this scepter of the kingdom. He said, the scepter, the scepter, the authority, the power of God's kingdom, the church, is resting on righteousness. My Father and my God, I pray, O oh God, that you help every one of us to ensure that we embrace this. Yes, it is clear. In Hebrew chapter 1 and verse 8 and 9. Now he said that throne of God is a, is a right throne, a righteous throne. Therefore, Lord, I pray that every one of us, my Father, who have been in the issue of righteousness, taking it lightly, Father, wake us up so that we can embrace it. Because there lies our strength, there lies our future, there lies our greatness, that lies our victory. A loss of righteousness is a loss for victory. Whoever loses righteousness has lost victory over the devil, victory over sicknesses, victory over the powers of the enemy. We have victory over the powers of the enemy as long as we are walking in righteousness and as long as we are living righteously. But if we forsake righteousness and begin to do something else, my Father, we are finished. I ask the Lord to help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church is called unto holiness. The church is called to make progress under holiness and then under righteousness. I want us to pray for every member of our family, every member of the church that uh, we should all love righteousness. Jesus loves righteousness. I hated iniquity. Therefore, Lord, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. The oil was not a dash. The oil was given to him because of his height of love for righteousness. Can we pray now? 
Father, this morning I pray, O oh God, that the uh, you create in me, you create in every person praying with me this morning. I have very deep and high hatred for righteousness. My Father, and then a love for righteousness. Create in our lives, O oh God, because when we hate on righteousness, I hate wickedness, I love righteousness, my Father and my God, I love holiness, then we are creating a room for a rise. We are, we are, we are giving our, we are developing wings, my Father. We are developing wings to fly. We are developing wings of authority. We are developing grace. We are developing arrows, my Father. Righteousness means every time. Therefore, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you help every one of us to follow after righteousness. That is why Timothy was told to follow after righteousness. My Father, because of what righteousness will deliver. Righteousness will deliver from death. Righteousness will deliver blessings into our life. Righteousness, my Father, is an instrument of making up. Therefore, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that every one of us, my Father and my God, we see reason to embrace righteousness. I pray for the youth of this church, my Father and my God, that everybody, everlasting Father, will embrace righteousness. Glory be to God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The authority and power of the church are founded upon righteousness and the holiness. So I want you to pray for restoration of drive to holy life drive to righteousness and not only a drive but even teachings teachings constantly that we promote right living because that is where the power of the church is residing that is where the authority of the church is residing a church that has lost focus on the matter of righteousness a church that the teachings are no longer righteousness driven holiness driven it's a church that has lost its authority and lost its power. Therefore, let us pray for our church and for our leaders that everybody will have a very strong drive towards righteousness and teach it to people. Father, this morning we come because the authority of the king, the authority of the church, the power of the disciple, Father, is residing on the on their embracing righteousness and holiness. Holiness is power. Righteousness is power. That is why it can exhort. That is why it can deliver. Therefore, Lord, this morning, I pray that every one of us in the position of teaching and teachers, Father, we receive a very strong drive. Father, give us a strong rebuke, my Father and my God, so that uh, every person, Lord, that uh, uh, that in is in a position of teaching, in a position of teaching house fellowship, in a position of teaching Bible study, in the position of teaching all the things we are teaching. Great Father, we lay very strong emphasis on right living, very strong emphasis on holiness, very strong emphasis on purity because of the power it possesses. Almighty Father, we thank you. Blessed be God forever and ever. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Righteousness exhausts a nation. Righteousness establishes a man. Righteousness prospers a people and a church. Can we pray for all members of your house, all members of the assembly, that everybody we embrace it. And we want to see the prosperity of the kingdom uh, people want to see the prosperity of the righteous manifesting because I know when the righteous begins to prosper, when the righteous begins to be established, when the righteous, when people begin to see the prosperity of the righteous, the righteous being exalted, the righteous being established, as a result of righteousness, they will embrace righteousness. Father, this morning we come. A demand is that we want to see righteousness exalting and putting people of the church in high places meanwhile what we see is a, a people that looks like a people that it looks like righteousness have defeated them my father that is the mind that is the mentality of the present people that once you embrace righteousness you can make progress once you embrace righteousness you cannot see the light of the dead but that is the lies of the devil 
Righteousness exhausts. Righteousness establishes a tone. Righteousness prospers people. For God taketh pleasure in the prosperity of his people. You need to be righteous because before you become God's people. Therefore, Lord, all the lies of the devil. I want to ask God Almighty by your provision, by your working, by your oppression. Please, Father, counter the lies of the devils in the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The kingdom of heaven oppress in its full capacity. But the kingdom of God on earth does not operate in the full capacity. We are going to pray for global recognition and oppression of the power of God by the church. Globally, revival, restoration, and people will realize that the church has power. The church has capacity. The church has authority. The power to rule, the power to decide lies with the church father this morning will come thank you for opening our eyes that uh, we have the power and it stated thine is the kingdom thine is the power thine is the glory thine is greatness thine is riches and if all of these things belong to god then they belong to us then they belong to us and uh, if they belong to god like we were told by our daddy in the lord god has right to operate and make use of what he has that is one of the reasons why it is not uh, a big deal because the one we are relating with, he has all the power, he has all the resources, he has all the, the forces, he has everything. Therefore, eternal Father in glory, as we embrace the word of God, as we embrace the authority of the king, as we embrace the righteousness of God, as we embrace my father, the church embraces the authority, embrace the righteousness of God, oh Lord, I pray that we begin to globally operate in our full capacity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at Daniel, look at Joseph. These were youths that were made great and who rose from nothing on the wings of righteousness. Want us to pray for our youths that God will begin to make them to embrace righteousness like Daniel, like Joseph, like three good children because that is where their greatness lies. That is where their lives lies. Father, this morning I present all my children, every one of them must embrace right living. Oh God, like Daniel, like Joseph. Now Daniel rose on the wings of embracing righteousness in a strange land. Joseph rose on the wings of embracing right living, even in a strange land which he started from his father's house. Father, I pray for all my children. I pray for all the youth. I pray for all the children around me. I pray for all my brother's children, blessed Redeemer, and my sister's children, and my in-law's children, every one of them around me. Father, my prayer, O oh God, and desire is that every one of them, eternal rock of ages, will embrace holiness and righteousness. Thank you, Almighty Father. Glory be to you now and forever in the name of jesus amen ezekiel spoke of iniquity not being the ruin of god's people sin is destructive many people have destroyed their future their homes their destinies their marriages because of sin i want us to pray for our family and family members that nobody will embrace iniquity because Every man and every woman that has in time past embraced iniquity was ruined, was destroyed by iniquity. Father, this morning we come in the name of Jesus, the name that is above all name. Father, we desire, O oh God, we desire from the Almighty Father that uh, every member of this household, Father, will embrace righteousness. Every member of the household of the watchman, watchman will embrace righteousness. Father, I present watchmen both in diaspora. All these are our young men and young women that are brought. Father, we bring them under the authority of your word. I pray that every one of them will embrace right living and avoid iniquity because iniquity is a destroyer of future, a destroyer of destiny, a destroyer of home, a destroyer of a grace of God, and a destroyer of anointing. How did, uh, how did Samson lose the anointing? He lost the anointing because of unrighteousness. What about Saul? He lost the anointing and the mighty came down because of uh, unrighteousness. Therefore, Lord, I pray you, O God, 
that you create again hatred for sin and love for righteousness in every heart of thy people around me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, let us pray for our daddy in the Lord and his family and all our daddies and their families to be kept and preserved by the Lord and let the Lord take absolute control of our lives and let us hand over the coming week, the coming week into the hand of the Lord and the coming month and let us lift up our voice and thank the Lord for today the last day of October it's been a wonderful time, it's been successful month and we're looking forward that the remaining two months the remaining two months will be month of November and December it will be a month of blessing it will be months of blessing it will be months that uh, many many things uh, that are outstanding will be brought into our lives Father, we thank you this morning because of leading us from the beginning of the month, Father, the first day of the month to today, 31st day of the month. What a wonderful God. What a glorious God. What a merciful God. What a caring God. Father, who has been so good to us, we bless your name. We exalt you. We honor you. We adore you. We sanctify you. We bless the Almighty Father. Thank you very, very much for everything. Thank you for bringing us, Lord, to this day, oh great Father, the last day of the month. Thank you because of the blessings that are coming. Oh God, we are trusting that the blessings of God will flood our life. We are trusting that the grace of God will trust our life. Father, we stand here to decree that the, the coming month will be a month of favor. It shall be a month of greatness. It shall be a month the people will record what they never recorded in their lives. Uh, positively, it shall be a month of recovery, it shall be a month to be remembered. Father, we decree against every force of darkness. We brought every program of the devil to trash. In the name of Jesus, we enthrone the power of God upon our lives. We enthrone the Lord upon our lives. He remained the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. My Father and my God, we join our voices with the voice of the angels. My Father, we join our voices with the voices of the angels. Blessed Redeemer, to say, Hosanna to the Lord God that reigneth. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. Thank you, my Father, for answer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you join me to sing hymn number 17? Oh, hell, the power of Jesus' name. Oh, hell, the power of Jesus' name. Let an get prostrate for. Let an get prostrate for. Bring forth the royal dam and crown him, 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 and crown him, Lord of all. Crown him, he matters of a God who from his altar call, who from is not a call, extol the stem of Jesse Rod, and crown him, 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 and crown him, Lord of all, ye chosen seed of Israel race, he ran some from the fall, he ran some from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him, 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 and crown him, Lord of all. May we share the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty bless you in the name of Jesus.